today you see three knit tops they are super cute and different because of the neckline it's an amazing little short collar with a button placket look at this detail here you can use the pattern for winter for summer I'm excited to show you how to sew that collar and to show you my three versions hi sewing friends I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and I'm super happy to share the Venado top from each to stitch this is a super cute pattern and I was very excited to sew it because the feature on the neckline is different not the typical neckline you're sewing on most neat tops loved it so cute and I love that you can make it for whatever weather you're in summer winter it just depends on your fabric choice I'm usually sewing the opposite season from most of you up in the northern hemisphere over here we're going to the cool weather in theory but it still hasn't happened so my garments can span the whole year it's not a seasonal pattern which I love you can see in the line out here that the top is fairly simple the front is cut on the fold up to here but then it opens up and that's where you get the small short collar that then crosses over here at the bottom for a button placket with two buttons super cute love that this is the focal point of the garment if you're sewing the full bust option you're gonna have a dart right there 10 out of 10 love that <laughs> if you're not sewing the full bust option then this is all smooth there no dart the back is on the fold and the sleeves you can make them short for summer long for winter that is in a nutshell the venado top i think it's really really beautiful and to prove that i was really smitten by the design i made three <laughs> i usually make two because of an auto top is a brand new pattern at each to stitch it'll be 20% off through next Monday the 22nd of April so if you want to grab your pattern for a little bit less it's always nice to grab it during the release week I have filmed a lot of helpful content for you especially about that collar which is really really fun to sew I will leave you my affiliate link in the description box and the pinned comments if you end up clicking on that link and purchasing I get a small commission back and that is one of the ways I make an income creating helpful content here on YouTube that you can watch for free so if you want to support my work here using my affiliate link is always a great way and I'm very appreciative if you do as I said you need neat fabrics don't try to make this in a woven fabric it's just not gonna work it's recommended that you have at least 50% stretch horizontally and vertically if you have the same that's fine but if you have a little bit less it's okay 30% I think vertically would be okay to fit the armhole nice and comfortably this is a fitted top you need that vertical stretch so if you go test your fabric and it only stretches sideways but not along the selvage I would not recommend you use that fabric now in my little fabric list in this graphic at the bottom I have warning and that's just because I don't think rayon spandex, modal spandex, bamboo spandex would hold up the collar feature really well even if interfaced these types of fabrics also stretch vertically then you end up with everything sagging down here on the armhole and just looking longer than you think it's just the fabric how it behaves so I would leave those types of fabrics for more simple knit tops, not ones with details here. I placed ITY in a warning section as well. This one doesn't stretch vertically like the ones I previously mentioned, but I think it's just so lightweight that the collar might end up floppy even if interfaced. So I personally would not use that. And then going to the other side of reality with fabrics, there are heavier ones like sweat shirting I wouldn't use. Ponty Roma as well. I don't think I'd want to use Ponty Roma. It might just be too structured and too heavy for the amount of layers you get in this section of the collar and the placket. So I personally wouldn't use it unless you have a softer, lighter type of Ponty Roma. I think that would be okay. And the fabrics I think would be amazing. I like to medium weight more, geared towards medium weight, sweater needs, rib needs. Rayon French Terry is amazing, cotton spandex. If you have a stretch velvet that stretches in every direction, I think it would look amazing as well. Other bit of notions, if you have fusible stay tape, that's gonna work to stabilize the shoulders and the center front here of this area of the front piece. I'm just using my regular interfacing that I cut into strips <laughs> that doesn't stretch and is also fusible as a replacement for that notion I can't find. And I used another method to stabilize the center front, which is modified block fusing. You'll see that in the sewing section. And you need two buttons. For one of my versions, I actually put three, so two or three. <laughs> the sizing is great from 00 to 40 US, it goes up to a 62 inch hip. And the cutoff for standard bust or the full bust option for each two stitch is three inches. So you need to measure your high bust, measure your full bust, know what difference that is. And if yours is from zero to three, you can sew the regular bust. If it's three or more, you can sew the full bust. Because mine measures three, I always go with the full bust option. I could do either, but I know that the dart works amazingly for me in the way that each to stitch 
drafts the patterns. In other brands that have a full bust option, sometimes I don't use a full bust option, I just stay with a regular bust because the cutoff is four inches. So it just depends, it's different for every brand. Don't assume that because you use one option in one brand, it's gonna be the same for all. Remember, every pattern designer has a different blog, they draft differently, and you just need to see where your shape and your body fits into there so that you have a good result. About the ease, it is semi-fitted at the bust. It's gonna have a bit of negative ease, which means the garment is gonna be a little smaller than your body right here, about three quarters of an inch, which is okay. Remember, you're working with stretchy fabric. <laughs> At the waist, you're gonna have a bit more ease, about four inches, and then at the hip, you're gonna have a little bit of positive ease, under one inch, three quarters of an inch. So it is a semi-fitted top. If you make it with a fairly lightweight fabric, you know, you can wear this under jackets. It's not gonna be bulky, it's gonna be okay. As for personal fitting, all I do is blend sizes. I do a 12 full bust, 14 waist, 16 hips, and I do that all along the side seam. In the finished garment measurements, you have the finished length. If you measure from the nape of your neck down, it's 25 inches. And I thought that's fine, that's how I made my first one, no length changes. I did add one inch of length to the sleeve though. And then when I finished that first garment, I thought I'd like it a tad bit shorter. So the second one, I made it one inch shorter. And then the third one, because I was working with a leftover rib knee from another project, I only had enough to cut a front and a back and the collar pieces, I was gonna make it sleeveless, but the length ended up being about four inches shorter than the original. It's more of a crop top, ends a little bit below my natural waist, about two inches below my waist. But that was just all personal preference there and because I didn't have enough fabric. <laughs> For the sewing, I have filmed mainly the collar and the placket because that is the most interesting part, maybe at something different that you haven't sewn before. I know that's what you want to see. So all the rest of the sewing, the general construction, I have not focused on. So let's see how to put this cute Venado top together in the collar section. This is the center front of this top and I'm gonna put this edge right here on one of the lines of my cutting mat. You can see that we're gonna cut away there and then it goes off into that shape there. This is where the short collar and the button placket is gonna go. In the instructions it says to fuse stay tape right here and along this edge right here. But as usual, I want to do a type of modified block fusing so that I don't distort the shape here. I've already done this once before with a garment I already made it turned out perfectly, but I'll show you what I did. I created this piece to cut out of interfacing. And what this is, is I put this behind it. This is to reflect my fabric that's going to be on the fold right here. You can see it's all along one line and it's green. So I want all of this to be interfaced. I drew my line right there over here. And then further than that, I want to cut three fourths of an inch right there or two centimeters. And that's what's gonna end up interface along this end right here. So I'm gonna cut this out of interfacing. You can see me, I'm using white interfacing. It's tricot knit interfacing. This is a knit garment, so that's the appropriate interfacing for this. I'm cutting it on the fold with my rotary cutter, and then I'm gonna extend it, and you can see it's got that funny shape that's gonna be right there in the center of my fabric. This is a piece of fabric from where I'm gonna cut this front piece that has that shape there in the center. So that's gonna go like that. And I folded it really neatly. And then what I've done along the fold, I'll show you up closer. While keeping this neatly on the fold, I did some quick basting stitches along there with red thread. Look at that. So you can see that there. And then that's just gonna help me know where I'm gonna fold the fabric again. <laughs> but I'm gonna extend this and put this extended on the ironing board. And I have my little red mark with thread that I can pull out afterwards. Then I'm going to take that interfacing piece I cut out and center it over here. Then I'm going to take this back and fold this again. And then all that section is going to have that shape that's interfaced. Here is my piece of fabric extended over the ironing board. You can see my red thread there marking right in the center where I'm going to fold this back. And here I have my piece of interfacing. So I'm placing the glue side down and I'm gonna center it right over that red line here. I am eyeballing this, but I'm pretty good at centering things. And I can actually see my red thread through the white interfacing here. So I'm pretty confident I've centered it. <laughs> now I'm gonna fuse this on, and then this area of the fabric will be already interfaced. Uh, this is a type of modified block fusing I'm using here. Here is my piece of fabric back on the table with this area already interfaced. I have folded it really carefully and have the red thread going all along the fold right there. And now I'm gonna place this on top right here. 
very carefully and cut it. I've put a few pins to hold it down and this more horizontal section I'm going to cut it with the scissors in one go there and then I'm going to keep going up for a little bit with my scissors I can get a better corner like that than with the rotary cutter and then I'm going to continue with the rotary cutter. So you can see if I lift this, I'm going to have all this center area already interfaced. This is going to be covered with the seam allowance later, so it's not going to be seen, but it's going to make this really nice and structured to hold the weight of the shawl collar and the placket. And from this fold, you can see that the interfacing goes under it as well, because that's what you need. So from this edge, remember I measured three quarters of an inch. That was what I planned and that's what I got. <laughs> This is a short collar piece and you need to cut two sets. One is non-interfaced and one set is interfaced. This is the interfaced one and of course I'm doing block fusing so you can see the piece of fabric is already interfaced, slightly larger than my pattern piece and I'm using the rotary cutter to cut around the edges. The best way to do it to conserve the original shape, have a look at this video all about block fusing if you want to know more about that. This is the front right here, this is the folded area from this point down but then it's open and then you can see the interface section that I did right there to create structure to hold the collar piece back is on the fold the collar pieces one set is not interfaced the other set is interfaced and short sleeves you can also do long sleeves here you can see that the shoulders of the back piece have been stabilized with a little strip of interfacing that's so that they don't end up stretching out and getting out of shape, especially with the weight of the sleeve that's going to go on there. So it's just a narrow strip of non-stretch interfacing that I fuse a little bit away from the edge so that I'm sure to catch it at the 3 8 seam allowance I'm going to use later. I'm going to do simple general construction of camera. What I've got here is I've got the shoulders pinned, I've got the darts pinned ready to sew. The darts are only going to be available in the full bust version, so if you're not sewing that you won't have darts. I have already assembled my sleeves because I like to sew them in on the round, that's going to be the last thing I do. I'm going to do those simple seams off camera and then we'll be back to start on the collar. And the first thing we're going to do with these collar pieces is sew the center backs. So these seams need to be sewn and pressed open. After sewing those little seams, I've pressed them open. I have the interface layer on the top, non-interface layer on the bottom. They're all extended right sides together. And we have an upper curve here. This is the one that we need to sew together now. This inner curve, you're going to find notches there that are going to match the shoulder seams later. So it's not that that we're sewing together. It's this top curve right there. I have hand basted it just to keep it neat. And we're going to sew it together with 3 8 seam allowance. This is what we've just sewn and towards the bottom of this straight area that's narrower, this is going to be the placket area, you're going to find a dot right there, a couple of inches from the raw edge of the bottom. That's the mark I have here and we're going to cut into the seam allowance right here, snip. This is what I like to call a break point, this is where the short collar is going to fold. So we're going to be under stitching the seam allowances in different directions in this area so that's why we need to snip into there. And then on this other side we have the same thing right there. After snipping, I'm going to extend this. I'm going to put a pin through this area where we snipped in the seam allowance so I can see it from this right side. And I'm going to make a little mark with chalk right there, yellow, so I can see it. So along the curved edge here on the top, which is a longer section, we're going to be pushing the seam allowance towards the interfaced collar right here. Non-interfaced, interfaced. So do that with your fingers. And then what I do is I put a pin so I don't forget. On this side, it's the same seam allowance pushed towards the interfaced collar and the pin right there. And now we're going to understitch seam allowance that way. And I made the little yellow mark because we're going to start this about an inch away from there, not right where we snip. So about an inch away, that's where we're going to start sewing on the edge, all the way along this curved edge. And then we're going to stop one inch before we get to this little mark right there. This has an L on it. It's also a type of blind hem pressable but different. When you move this, it moves this edge in or out. So you can actually get whatever seam allowance you want and it's really helpful. I've set it here to about an eighth of an inch. This is the collar extended, I'm under stitching and towards my left hand, I have the interface collar and the seam allowance is tucked in under there. So 
So that's how that looks like from the inside and the stitching has fixed that seam allowance towards the interface collar right there. But remember we started an inch from that nib so that's where you can see the stitching. And now in this tiny little section over here we're going to be pushing the seam allowance to the opposite side so towards the non-interfaced collar and that's how this is going to be sewn. Also we're going to be stopping an inch before the snip and that's why I'd mark the snip area with yellow there. <laughs> Now that this is done, we're going to fold everything wrong sides together, align these center back seams, align everything along these two row edges, and I'm going to give it a quick basting stitch. I'm going to do that by hand, and these little marks are going to match the shoulder seams. I'm not going to be able to see them now, so I'm going to mark them again with chalk so I can see them. <laughs> I've been to the iron and pressed everything. There is my red hand basting that is going to keep these two layers in place. Now it's really important for you to check here in the seam allowance which is the side that's interfaced and which is the side that isn't because when we place this onto the neckline the interface side needs to be right sides together with the neckline. So I'm going to remember by putting a pin right here that this is my right side of the collar because it's the interface side right there. Before we align the collar to this neckline, we want to do some stay stitching in the center area. So I have these little dots set out on the pattern. It's basically the seam allowance of 3 8 where they intersect. And I want to stay stitch about an inch above, like that, pivot, like that and like that. And it's going to help us stabilize the area and also have a clear point of reference to align the collar to. You can see that when I stitched this at 3 8 I was being super accurate with the metal plate underneath. You can see that my dots were a little off. So I'm going to trust the seam allowance rather than the dots that I made as my reference. So that corner is my reference, that corner is my, my reference, not necessarily these dots I had drawn before. Now the way I do dots is by pinning through the pattern piece and then coming out the other side and then doing the little mark. It's not a perfect method and you can see that I was off on both of the dots, but that's okay. That's why we do the stay stitching first and that's really gonna confirm everything that that corner is the reference and that corner is the reference there. I'm going to be sewing the collar with this area on the top. So I want to be sewing on this interface area, touching the presser foot and the collar at the bottom. This is a more stable area. That's why I want it to be like that. And I can also see the dots really clearly. So I've got my collar over here. I know that this is the right side of my fabric. So I'm going to put this inside here, right sides together. This is the interface side of the collar. And I'm going to align that to the center back. So my pin is my center back and my seam is my center back. And I'm going to align that right here. And then I'm just going to put this all inside over here. That's all going to align. Over here we had a little mark that's going to align with the shoulder seams right there perfectly and so we keep aligning everything over here and this is going to be behind it i'm going to poke a pin right through this corner here and on this other side i don't have a dot marked because i'm afraid that's going to be seen when i sew my garment on the other side but i'm coming out right here i'm going to put a dot on the screen where the intersection of seam allowances would be when i have this pin here i have three eighths of an inch coming down lower over here and it's going to be the same on this other side. This would be easier if this fabric was easier to mark with a system that I could see, but that would come out easily. So I'm going to put my pin through that corner, not through the dot because the dot's off. And then I'm coming out right here at the intersection of seam allowances. So now that I've got the bottom pinned, now I'm going to pin all this area here and all of this area there. I had already pinned the back partially. And if you know my sewing, I'm going to hand baste this because I don't want to deal with pins in this area. Okay, everything's hand basted. This is how this looks like on the inside. So you can see that this is protruding from this edge by three fourths of an inch or two centimeters. I'm gonna start sewing here right on that corner, three eighths. I'm probably gonna sew right on top of that stay stitching, which is fine, I'll reinforce there and go all the way around until I finish on this other dot there. And once that's done, then we can snip into the corners.
And now we can do the little infamous snip right here. And that's why I chose to do white interfacing on this one so you could really see what's going on because I probably would have done black interfacing if I wasn't filming. Now that we've snipped, we can overlap the placket. So the placket that's on the right wearer side is usually the one that has the buttonholes. So that's the one that's going to go on the top and the one that goes on the left wearer side is the one that goes on the bottom. So I'm just going to overlap them and then we can push them through here because we have that snipped area and then these are just going to get tucked in there. So that seam allowance is going to be folded in and we're going to fix this all from this side. So we have all these layers at the back and this is the last stage that we have to sew for to fix this placket in place. I'm going to put a pin right here and we can clearly see what we need to sew. We can actually start further from here, but we need to go right over this area, right over that stay stitching and then finish off over here and that's going to close the bottom of this placket. A lot of layers, so I'm going to use a longer stitch length and just a straight stitch. So this is how it's going to look from the other side, a very neat the bottom of the placket. Now before actually closing this and before sewing this collar onto the neckline that's when you should have done the buttonholes but I've never planned to do buttonholes here. I did do buttonholes for one of my versions and then when I tried it on I figured out I'm never going to open the buttons. I want them both closed otherwise the neckline would be too low for me. So if we can make things easier <laughs> I'm just going to sew the buttons right through. And I'm going to use the same marks, the same references where the buttons would go. It's just that I'm not going to have buttonholes. So I'm going to have a button there and a button there and I'm going to go right through. Then if you want to, you can always finish your edges. That's something I'm always going to do. <laughs> and I'm going to start from here, go all the way around, finish here and then finish with this little one right there. And that will fix it in place. And then we're going to top stitch. After surging all of this on the inside, I'm going to top stitch this seam allowance flat. So I'm just doing it with the same presser foot I've been using everywhere and it's going to give it that nice finishing touch. Now that the collar is done, you can relax. <laughs> this is what takes a little while longer. Now I've just got side seams to sew, a sleeve to set in on the round and a hem to do and that'll be it. Look at this cute sweater. This is a lightweight sweater knit. If you look at it quickly, you might just think it's red with a black collar, but I've done some sneaky color blocking and used black for the back. I had a little bit left over that wasn't good for a whole garment, but it was good enough to cut the back and the collar pieces. So I really wanted to use that up. They are the exact same type of fabric, same weight, everything, just different colors. And I like it. I like the sneakiness of this color blocking. It's very subtle. <laughs> I think it looks great. This is not the garment I chose to film on this color is not conducive to good visuals because it's all black I used black interfacing in there as well and this is the only one where I actually put button holes in the placket right here you saw that for the one in the tutorial I didn't do the button holes but this one actually does when I tried this on the first time I thought you know maybe I need to leave one unbuttoned or whatever and no no I need them both buttoned at all times to keep the collar nice and not showing too much so because I knew I was never going to unbutton anything for my next two versions, I just sewed the buttons right through and didn't make buttonholes. I have nothing against buttonholes. I will gladly make 20 if the garment needs it. I have no issue, any type of issue with buttonholes. But when I see that they're not really required for functionality, I will just won't do them. I'll just sew the buttons right through. This one has a long sleeve. This one's one inch longer than the original sleeve because I'm a little bit taller. I think snipping at the break point and under stitching in different sections is really helpful helpful because you can see the under stitching there it's hidden when the collar is folded here but then at the bottom where the placket is the under stitching is under here so that is the reason for under stitching in different sections and it's perfect it's the way I do my break points my blazers everything but you're not always going to find that in some pattern instructions so the fact that this is here 10 out of 10 I love that technique there you can see the buster for this top it was very well placed for me, the positioning, I didn't need to raise it or lower it, so I'm very happy with that. In the styling section for all of these three Venado tops, you're going to see some of the bottoms repeat, but they are different styles, just different styles of bottoms, so you can see how they could look 
with a top like this. So let's see. This is my first Renato top from each to stitch. This is a size 12 with a full bust option, 14 waist and 16 hips. It's got the original length, but I added one inch of length to the sleeves just because I'm a little taller. I've done some subtle color blocking that you can only see when I turn around. It mainly looks red with a black collar right there. Paired with a refashioned linen skirt and some boots. This is a sweater knit, so it's for cooler weather in my case, and you can make the pattern for whatever weather you want. I really love the fit. It is semi-fitted, which follows my shape beautifully and this is the amazing show collar that ends up in a little placket it's got two buttons the shoulder fit and the sleeve fit is super good i love how that looks on the back folded back very nicely there's some very clever under stitching going on in that collar to make it light perfectly and i love the contrast with the black this is the one i sewed buttonholes through and there is my bust that right there maybe color blocking is not for you but i thought this was cool and something different also the black was something i had left over that i really wanted to use These bottoms are totally different. These are trousers, tapered in at the ankle a little bit. These are flat front elasticated back because with a little bit more of ease is not fitted pants and I love the gray the black and the red I think it's always a great color combination and another autumn look for me that is actually the season I'm in right now although it's still very hot after sewing this one and figuring out I might want it one inch shorter I did go ahead and make my following version shorter so I might actually go ahead and make this an inch shorter because I think that would just suit me better but I love this look Now the next look is a little bit out there, it's a little bit stripey, I think it might be too much for a lot of people. I'm not using many colours here and I think red, black and white is something that always goes together. I think this is pretty striking. I love this skirt. The stripes are very interesting here and it's asymmetric which is something I always love whether it's in style or not. Paired with blue boots here, keeping it autumn winter but my next versions you'll see are more summery. <laughs> I love how this looks and it feels amazing on. Love it. My second version is the one you saw in the tutorial. It's a rayon French terry with super subtle stripes like this, so that doesn't bother me. I usually don't like bold, bold stripes. The stripes are in the weave of the fabric and this is such an amazing gray. The wrong side of the fabric is very much different to the right side and that's why I thought it was good for a tutorial. I also used the white interfacing inside so you could see the collar being sewn really well. Here I have the two buttons sewn right through using the same marks where they were supposed to be but just no buttonholes. <laughs> little short sleeve over here and all the rest is the same now this is a leftover fabric i had from making another top a long sleeve top and so i had just enough to cut all my pieces but not enough to match the stripes on the side so on the side they do not match but the stripes are so subtle i don't think it's anything noticeable it doesn't disturb me if the stripes are really really bold and there was a lot of contrast between them then i would not be happy i would be very unhappy to have the stripes, you know, like that on the sides. But with this, I'm fine. I'm going to show you the inside of this gray one. Remember, you saw that I fused white interfacing all along the neckline. Some of you might have thought, wow, that's gonna look horrible on the inside. And I said, don't worry, it doesn't show. <laughs> it doesn't show. <laughs> so that's how the collar looks on the inside. The interfacing is under there. So when this is folded over, it's tucked in there. No one's ever gonna know that you had all that interfacing there. It'll be the same if you use state tape like the pattern recommends, but it's just not seen in there. So that is absolutely fine. Even the one under here to stabilize the shoulders is not anything that anyone can see. So it accomplishes the function of making everything stable and you're not gonna see it, so don't worry. There is the bust start from the inside. I think it's super discreet. It does distort the stripes a little bit there, but nothing bad. My second Venado top from each to stitch. This is a French Terry, size 12 full bust, 14 waist, 16 hips, just the same. It's one inch shorter. 
than the original length and I have short sleeves here. I love it paired with a skirt from the So Beautiful book and there are grey tones in that print. I love grey and purple anyway so I love this. And the stripes are subtle enough that I'm happy to wear it with something print on the bottom. I usually don't print clash but I think these stripes are really really subtle. Here's a closer look at the beautiful short collar with a placket. I have two buttons sewn right through the plackets. I didn't do button holes here because I'm never gonna need to undo a button and I'm just really happy this fabric is so soft and it's the right weight interfaced to be able to work with the placket and the collar so it's so lovely I love it so much I think I could also tuck this in a little bit on the side if I wanted or just keep it out all options when you style your clothes I love this so lovely The next look is a little more casual. This skirt is made with an athletic knit. I've got some great sneakers with a biggish platform and my t-shirt. It looks amazing. I would be very happy and comfortable dressed like this on a day where I had to be active. I've done a side tuck here, not a front tuck, just to give myself some shape on the side. It's always an option that you can do if you're not happy with fully tucking in, which I never am. So yeah, this is great. There is gray in this print actually, so I love it. There you can see it tucked out. Such a nice little outfit and very casual. I'm very happy I can dress this up. And, and now I've pulled out the grey denim trousers that I'd shown before for a bit of a monochromatic look. I even have grey shoes in here. I love those heels. But I've brought a little bit of colour with my handbag, which I love. I think the pink goes great with any monochromatic look I want to do and just brighten up. So there it is. I love this length so much better than the sweater knit version. So I've actually decided I am going to raise that hem a little bit just to be 100% happy with my make. Really enjoy an outfit like this. Monochromatic has been growing on me over the last couple of years. And then my third one is super tiny. Look at this. It's like so short right here, but it's fine. It's that much below my natural waist so I'm it's covering all the waistbands all the things and it's all the same just a rib knit not good for filming at all so this was the last one I made off, ca off camera and it was very fast to make because I'd already made it so many times here I use three buttons instead of two but it's still at the same height where the other one would have been they're just closer together and for the sleeveless armhole, I have that type of binding that you flip to the inside and the inner section is surged and then it's sewn stitch in the ditch so you can't really see it. It's super neat and I love this technique for sleeveless armholes. Now I did change the shape of the armhole only slightly when I tried it on. I took it in from here about an inch. I just cut it from there and then came back to the original armhole. It's the same height under here and I think the fit is just, just perfect. Just a little bit narrower and that's something you can do with sleeveless, just, just trim it to the shape that you want, you know? My third Venado top from each to stitch, this one is a little bit rogue because it's sleeveless, which is not official part of the pattern and it's a good four inches shorter. I think it goes perfectly with these Samara pants from each to stitch, wide leg bottoms are always gonna go very well with something cropped, but then the top is shorter and it's not so short. I still have all the amazing details at the top with the collar and the placket. Sleeveless armhole, slightly narrower than when the sleeve was supposed to be there. And it's lovely. This ribney is amazing. It was left over from another project and I'm very happy I have found a use for it. There was no way I could have made it any longer or added sleeves even if I wanted. <laughs> These pants up to now are one of the most striking pants I have. I get a lot of stares when I wear them. Here is my stripey asymmetric skirt again paired with my cropped venado top. I think it goes really well. Even though the yoke of the skirt is fairly fitted, it's not super super fitted. So I'm happy to wear something cropped like this on top. I think this goes well with the train of thought of dressing in thirds, those proportions, vertical proportions. And I'm just really happy to have a black top that's shorter because mine, most of mine are longer. I love it. You know, I could have done something else with the footwear to not make it so dressed up, but I love it like this you know that's my jam here is my gorgeous purple skirt again with that high low wrap front detail there I love it 
I've had it for so many years and it's one of my favorite skirts even until now and I think it goes perfectly with the top this skirt also is not super fitted I wouldn't wear something cropped with something super fitted on the bottom but I think this is a good middle ground and I think it goes perfectly so comfortable the skirt has an elasticated back feature so it's so lovely to wear and the top just falls in perfectly with this look love having a crop version of this venado that is also possible just make it shorter if you don't want sleeves just bind the armholes there's always an official options in every pattern I love that them all together here so you can see the length changes the one on the back is the original length the next one is an inch shorter and then look how much difference there is about four inches there they all serve their purpose in my wardrobe and I love that I hope you give the Venado top a go it's such a versatile pattern if you are into sports you can wear it instead of like a polo shirt it could sort of replace that because it's got that collar option I think it's really cute I don't play golf or, or do any type of sport like that but I could see that that's just in my head because I do not play these sports <laughs> So I'm just giving you ideas and if you've never sewn a collar and a placket like this I think it's totally doable you can tick off a box and do something new which is always great in our sewing journey My video shows all the details so you can do it too and yeah, I'm very satisfied So satisfied I made three which is rare. I usually just make two make sure to grab it when it's 20% off because why not? <laughs> Find all the links in the description box below and the pinned comment and I'll say goodbye now. That is all for me. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you back here at Lifting Pins and Needles with more sewing very soon. Bye!